Hey guys, PLJ underscore 95 here with an infinite XP zero tick kelp farm for Minecraft Bedrock. It is important you do not build this farm over a chunk border as this can break the farm. This farm produces up to 38,000 kelp per hour and 11 levels of experience per dried kelp taken out of the XP machine. For this farm, you will need the following items. 70 building blocks, 11 redstone dust, 4 redstone torches, 1 redstone repeater, 1 lever, 1 crafting table, 4 sticky pistons, 12 pieces of sand, 8 chests, 12 hoppers, 4 pistons, 26 glass blocks, 4 glass panes, 4 trap doors, 2 water buckets to make an infinite water source, 4 kelp, 4 slabs, 4 smokers, and 4 pieces of coal. Now that you know the items that you need to build this farm, without further ado, let me show you how to build it. The first thing that you need to do for this farm is to make a redstone clock. Do this by placing a crafting table down and then placing a torch on the front. Then go behind the crafting table and place down a piece of redstone dust. On top of the redstone dust and on top of the torch, place two of your building blocks and then on the front of it, place your lever. Then whilst crouched on top of the crafting table, place your redstone repeater so that the prongs are facing towards the redstone dust. Then you can turn it off by flicking down the lever. Now place one piece of redstone dust behind the one you placed before and then place four of your building blocks to the right. Then run your redstone dust on top of those four building blocks and then bring more building blocks out to the front in a row of four like that. Then miss one because we'll need this to make our zero tick farm work. And then one space in front, put four more blocks and you should have something that looks like this. Now take your sticky pistons and place them against the redstone line that you put before. They should all extend, which is exactly what we want. Then place four sand against the faces of the sticky pistons. And then in the space where you can see that there is the gap underneath, place sand too high on the sticky pistons, just like this. Now that we have the sand and the sticky pistons in place, you want to start placing the blocks that you have left on the places that you can see the sand, except these ones at the front. So you want to block these ones at the side. Make sure that you block this one so that no sand does go out sideways. Make sure you block all the sticky piston faces as well. These ones count as being blocked because the redstone signal is already there. And then just so that we have a little bit of extra protection, make sure that you fill it in all the way around the side. These ones at the front can stay empty. So now we want to make the collection system for our kelp that comes out of this farm. So place a building block that is coming out from the middle. We will delete this one later. Then place two chests in the middle that form a double chest. Then go to either side and place a chest like this. Make sure it looks like this because this is going to be our main XP farm and the ones on the outside are going to be used to make our dried kelp which will be used as a fuel source for this farm. Don't forget to break the temporary block and then come behind the chest and have the hoppers feeding directly into the chest that you can see. So on the side chest, crouch into it and you can see the prongs are going directly into the chest that they are next to. Now come to the top of your farm on either one of the sides, just outside of the hoppers, place two of your building blocks to cover the entire farm. Now come to the back and place a line of building blocks all the way across. Then on either side, build up two blocks and then fill in the top layer only. So you should have a four space gap in the middle. We're then going to use our pistons to fill this gap and the faces of them should be facing the sand and the hoppers. Now on either one of the sides of these, place your glass in a three by three formation. So you should get a three by three square on either side and it will take you all the way up to the ceiling. Then over the hoppers themselves, place four glass panes. And the reason for this is because when the kelp pushes down here, we can use the panes to collect them. Whereas if we had the glass that we are putting above the panes to cover the rest of the cage, we would not be able to collect the kelp. Now that you have this open space at the top of the glass, place your water buckets so that they go all the way across. If you're in survival, you might have to make an infinite water source before you do this and go down, refill your buckets and come back up to the top. Then once you have this, place your kelp on the sand just like this. Then take your slabs and place them on the top half of the building block above the pistons and do this all the way across. Then get your trapdoors and place them in front of the slabs just like this. This is so that if we have any issues with the kelp, we have a way to get into the farm without breaking any of the glass. 
now you want to come to the back of this farm and place a building block just to the left hand side of the sticky pistons. This will be on the opposite side of where your redstone clock was built before. Then on this block, place your redstone torch so that it is against it like this. Then all you have to do is go up and place a building block on top of this one, a redstone torch on top of that one, another block on that one, and then run the blocks all the way behind the top pistons. Then take another redstone torch so that we have a elevator going all the way up, and then run a redstone line all the way to each one of the pistons. You will know you've done this correct because the bottom pistons will be extended and lit up with the redstone dust, whereas the ones at the top will not be extended and the redstone will not be lit. You can now check that the redstone works by going down to the lever and flicking the switch up. You'll note that it is working because the kelp is instantly growing and then eventually being pushed towards the hoppers. So there may be a time where this block here has a water source block there. But eventually the hoppers will delete this block and the only one that will have water flowing is the one at the bottom. And then all the kelp will be pushed towards the hoppers. You can turn it off by flicking the lever down. We now have the whole process for the kelp farm finished, which means we only have the XP farm left to build. So come directly underneath your chest and whilst crouched place a hopper underneath each one of them and then underneath each one of these hoppers again whilst crouched place one of your smokers. Then when you see the smokers like this come one block out to the right one and place a chest with your two middle ones come out one in front and place a double chest like this and the one on the left come out one to the side and place another chest like this. Then take your last remaining hoppers and whilst crouching and on the chest that it goes towards on the left side, make it so that the prong goes towards that one and then do exactly the same on the outside. The reason for this is because these ones are going to be our fuel chests. Then come behind the XP farm and on the middle one, whilst crouched, place it against the chest like this and you'll have both of your hoppers feeding into that chest. Now at this point, if you want to turn on your farm to get more kelp going into the top chest, you can. And then go to the side ones and take half of your coal and place them into them. This will be the only coal that you ever have to use in this farm because you need coal to get the dried kelp. But the problem with coal is coal only smelts eight dried kelp and you need nine dried kelp to make a full block. But dried kelp blocks smelt 20 items so once you've used those four initial pieces of coal you will be able to infinitely make more dried kelp because you'll put the dried kelp as the fuel source in each one of the smokers and you can make them because we put the crafting table as our redstone clock block to keep powering this farm what you have to do is you have to go to the side chest and keep taking the dried kelp out of it so you can see in here i have dried kelp blocks that are powering these smokers because i've afk'd here for a while and repeated this process over and over so you go into the crafting table it helps if you know exactly what it is in the interface and then what you can do is come to the middle one where our xp farm is and start placing dried kelp blocks in there don't forget that you need to keep these side ones powered because this is where all our fuel source is going to come from because we do not want to take any kelp out of this chest. You can take them out of this chest and this chest because they are designated for our fuel sources. But if you take them out of here, you will break your XP farm. I will come back once all of the kelp has been smelted from this chest and these hoppers and they have gone down into this chest. Now that everything is cooked through the smokers and is filled up inside the double chest and both of the hoppers like this, when you put a dried kelp block inside the smokers, what will happen is the dried kelp will stay in this slot here in the smoker. And that is how you get the banked XP from the combination of all these spaces here. So if I take one piece out, you'll see I go from level zero all the way up to 11. The most efficient way to take kelp or any xp out of these machines is one at a time because it resets the counter and it goes from there on some occasions you might find that the sand has fallen underneath the sticky piston all you have to do is break that sand down there then come up to the top where you can see the affected area and then what you have to do is go into that spot right there place a, another piece of sand and then place another piece of kelp on the top then you get yourself out Go all the way back down to the lever and turn the farm back on and you can see that it has fixed itself. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button below. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Bye.